The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Happy Easter to you all. He is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. We have our Easter morning story from the Gospel of John. And it involves three characters, three familiar characters. Mary of Magdala, Peter, and the beloved disciple. On this Easter morning, we begin our stories of the risen Christ. And in this particular story, the very first encounter with Jesus is in an empty tomb. Even though Jesus is not there, they are encountering the reality of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is their first encounter. This is their first opportunity to begin to witness this promise of Jesus to rise from the dead. Mary of Magdala. She leaves, it tells us in the story, and very, very early in the morning, while it's still dark. And she's going to the tomb to pay her respects and to do her Jewish disciplines of burials. But there's something odd about this. She's traveling while it's still night. She's traveling alone. And neither of those are acceptable for any women of the Jesus' day. She shows her deep loss and her sorrow and her deep affection for the Lord by taking a risk. She is risking not only being found out as traveling at night and alone as a woman, but she's taking the risk of being associated with Jesus. She too could very well be arrested. But that will not hold her back because of her love for Jesus. And so she goes, even in the worst of circumstances, she courageously walks to the tomb. When she discovers it empty, she immediately needs to tell someone and she's going to go to Peter, the rock. And she goes to Peter and the beloved disciple and tells them of her assumptions that the body's been stolen. It's a pretty good assumption on Mary's part. Peter and the beloved disciple respond to her news like she did. They run to the tomb. The beloved disciple does not enter, but
but he sees the burial cloths. Peter, on the other hand, enters. And he too, as he examines the empty tomb, says nothing but truly encounters the Lord Jesus, the risen Lord Jesus. He says nothing and he departs. The beloved disciple, the story tells us, says that he enters the tomb and believes, but in the next line, it tells us that they did not yet understand the scripture. So what was it that the beloved disciple believed? Did he believe what Mary said, that the body had been taken? Did he believe in Jesus' prophesying that he, this would happen to him? Did he believe in something other? We don't know. It just says that he saw and believed. And so certainly, even an empty tomb is an encounter with Jesus for the beloved disciple. Peter's silence tells us probably a common response of any leader. He keeps quiet until he has a chance to figure this out. But he too must have begun, must have begun thinking, was Jesus' prophecies true? Is he truly risen from the dead? Or... Have they indeed stolen the body? But it's the body wrappings that question that theory. Why are they there? If someone was to steal a dead body, they would not unwrap, for that would certainly make them unclean. They would just carry it as it was wrapped. But the wrappings are there. The signs of death are left in the tomb, but there is no Jesus in the tomb. How often in our lives do we respond similar ways to things that are not ever so clear to us, things that we don't understand, things that we might disagree with, and yet we search. We search for the truth. And on this Easter morning, we are reminded and we will proclaim in our renewal of baptismal promises, we will proclaim that that empty tomb is the risen place of Christ. We will say in our baptismal promises that we believe this, and so, unlike these three disciples, who are not yet having the experience of the Jesus risen and standing before them and speaking to them, that will come. But for now, the empty tomb helps them to begin to ask the important questions of faith. May we on Easter Sunday ask the difficult questions of faith. May we reunite ourselves with this risen Lord. May we seek to find him wherever. He is risen. He has freed us from the power of sin and death and has opened for us a way to salvation. We proclaim this by faith. We know this because the scriptures have told us. Mary, Peter, and the beloved disciple did not have that luxury. We do. So let us trust in this great promise of God's salvation for us. And as we prepare to renew our own baptismal promises, let us indeed Proclaim that Jesus is risen. May you and your families be blessed this day on Easter Sunday. 
May your gatherings together bring you comfort and joy as we celebrate this Easter Sunday. May God bless you and may you have a blessed and renewed Easter.